What wheel should you use for your robot? This is a very important question to be asking when you're designing a robot, and it's also a very hotly debated topic. And in the second installment of what wheel should you use for your robot, I'm going to provide even more information to help you make an even more informed decision. So, in my past video, which is conveniently titled, What are the best wheels for an FLO robot? I had claimed that these tall motorcycle wheels were the best wheels for an FLL robot, and they do have their merits. The first thing is since they're really tall, they make your robot a lot faster. That means your robot spends less time in transit going to missions, and it has more time overall to complete more missions, theoretically anyway. Also, since uh, they're tall, they also allow you to mount your motors upside down like this, so you can make a much more compact robot and also they're really thin which helps with making a compact robot and that really helps a lot because you can make a robot that's as small as serious. However, I discussed this topic with Carl4123 who's a fellow Mindstorms YouTuber and another person in the Mindstorms community and he gave me some extra information and insight that I felt that I had to share with you guys and this information should be weighed when you're making your final decision on what wheels that you would like to use. The main focus of my discussion with Carl4123 was backlash and what the effect that different wheel sizes have on the backlash in the motors. What happens is the tall wheels multiply the backlash or gear slop within your motors. And I'm using NXT motors here to demonstrate this concept, but it also works with the EV3s. So like I said, it multiplies the backlash and this decreases the consistency of the motor rotation. So let's say that you uh, told the motor to rotate say 360 degrees and now that the backlash is multiplied you have more degrees of backlash that means your robot could either drive less than this distance or more and it increases the inconsistency in the robot and since FLL programs are a bunch of actions that are compounded on one another this is going to add up over time and it creates inaccuracies within your robot performing missions however smaller wheels multiply the backlash significantly less than taller wheels which makes them more consistent and more reliable in getting the robot to move where it needs to go. I'm not going to be that bossy annoying person who's always telling people what to do so ultimately the decision is yours. You're the one who's going to be building the robot, you're the one who knows what you want to get out of your robot and you're going to build your robot to suit the needs of whatever you need it to do and you're going to review this list of pros and cons and decide what are your priorities and what don't you mind so much. I can suggest as a compromise these medium sized wheels which come with the EB3 education set because they won't multiply the backlash as much as the tall motorcycle wheels yet they're not like totally short where your robot would be as slow as a snail. However they don't allow you to build with your motors upside down so you are going to lose a degree of compactness in your robot. But again the decision is yours. Kind of a weird ending to a tutorial I know. But the purpose of this tutorial was to give you all of the information that you need to make an educated decision on what wheels that you would like to use. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this. And don't forget to submit your idea for a tutorial if you would like to see me make a video about it. So thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.